So you probably clicked on this video because you're a beginner photographer and you're looking for some essential tips to get you started. Well, you come to the right place. I'm going to give you 10 essential tips to get you started as a beginner photographer. And be sure to stick around at the end because number 10 is very important to this whole craft. But I'm not gonna keep you waiting any longer, so let's get started with number one. Shoot in raw. Now, if you're completely new and have no camera experience whatsoever, you're probably thinking, well, what the heck is RAW? RAW is simply a file type that allows you to capture the maximum amount of detail and dynamic range in an image and gives you complete creative control in post-processing or when you're editing. Now, sometimes there's a couple options for RAW. You might find compressed RAW or uncompressed RAW. The difference between these quality-wise is typically pretty minimal. They've done a great job at shrinking down the file sizes of raw files because they can sometimes be massive while retaining the maximum amount of detail in the image. Rule of thumb though, if you want the most creative freedom in post-processing, shoot uncompressed raw. That will give you all the detail your camera can capture. But where are you gonna find this? So head into your menu settings in your camera and you'll find something along the lines of file type. Under file type, if you haven't touched your camera before, it'll always usually say JPEG. Now the options might be JPEG, JPEG small, JPEG medium, JPEG large, and then raw, compressed raw, uncompressed raw. So this is where you wanna change over to at the very least compressed raw. That way you have the most control over your image in post-processing. So if you think you might've pushed the highlights a little too far in camera, raw will give you the option to reclaim some of that detail in the highlights in post post-processing. But if you've completely clipped the highlights, then they're gone. Sorry, I don't know what else to tell you. Not even raw can save you. But as a beginner, that's okay. It, it happens. Trust me, we've all been there. But that's why you want to shoot in raw because it gives you more flexibility over the colors and dynamic range in the final image when you're editing. One little important thing to note though, you will need an editing software that can read raw file types. Because raw is essentially a bunch of numerical values saved as a file type that your editing software interprets and makes into an actual image. That was probably pretty poorly explained, but essentially it's not actually a picture, it's a bunch of numbers until you can have an editing software that can read that file. Something along the lines of Lightroom or Photoshop. And sometimes when you buy a camera, your camera manufacturer will include a raw suite for you to edit those photos in. Very basic. So if you don't have an editing software like that that can read raw file types, shoot in JPEG so that you can still actually enjoy your photos. Number two, shoot in manual mode early. And what I mean by this is start shooting in manual mode as soon as you get your camera. That way you can begin to learn the fundamentals of photography right away. Aperture, shutter speed, ISO, and so on. If you really wanna dive into this as a hobby and get as good as you can, or even take it to a career, you're gonna need to learn how to use manual mode. And if you've never touched manual mode before, I did a complete beginner's guide on my channel, which I'll link up here somewhere in one of these little cards that you can click to watch the video. Because manual mode gives you complete creative and artistic freedom. You'll have full control over aperture, shutter speed, ISO, and so on, which will allow you to get really creative shots in camera. A big example of this is light painting, long exposure photography, or shutter drag photography. You can't really shoot with those styles when you're shooting in auto mode. So it's important that when you start your photography journey, you start learning manual mode immediately. It's important to know your camera inside out and to learn how it works and how to get the results that you and your clients want. Number three, use your EV meter and histogram. What the do is help you make sure that your image is properly exposed. Now what does exposed mean? If you don't know, it's okay. I'm gonna explain it to you very briefly right now. Exposure essentially determines how bright or how dark your image is and the amount of detail captured in the brightest and darkest parts of your image. So when I say properly exposed, I mean properly exposed for whatever you're shooting and whatever your subject is, while still capturing the most amount of details in the highlights and the shadows. If you underexpose your image, you've lost a lot of that detail in the darkest parts of your image or the shadows. And if you overexpose your image, you've lost a majority of the detail in the highlights. So if you use your EV meter and your histogram, that'll help you get a properly exposed photo. So how do you read the EV meter and the histogram? The EV meter will have a bunch of numbers. There'll be zero in the middle, plus one, plus two, plus three, and then negative one, negative two, negative three on the left side. If your little arrow is hanging out on the left side, then you're kind of underexposing your image and you're gonna to start to lose the shadow detail. And if the little arrow is hanging out on the, I don't know what way this is on camera, I think it's flipped. But if it's hanging out on the right side, then your photo is gonna be slightly overexposed. And the further you go to the left or the right, you're losing more and more data in the highlights or shadows. In most instances, you can afford to go a little bit to the left or right when you're shooting in RAW, because RAW will allow you to bring some of that detail back. But it's best practice to not let it get too far to the right or the left. So the histogram is essentially the same way. The further that blob gets to the right, the more overexposed your image is. If it at all touches that right side, 
you've completely clipped your highlights. And if it touches the left side, you've clipped your shadows. In other words, you've lost detail in the highlights or the shadows. So try to expose so that you're not touching the right or the left. Now, proper exposure on the histogram and the EV meter will vary depending on what you're shooting and what you need to expose for. So I'm not really gonna get into that in this video, but that's just the basics of how to read your EV meter and your histogram and how they work. Number four, the rule of thirds. It's funny that four is the rule of thirds. I should have made the rule of thirds number three and then number three, number four. I wasn't really thinking about that when I scripted this video. Missed opportunity. So the rule of thirds is a composition technique and composition is everything in photography. A bad composition is an unpleasing photo to look at. Good composition is a very pleasing photo to look at. Our eyes naturally gravitate to a certain order and find certain things appealing and unappealing. And the rule of thirds is just a way to try and get a good composition. And you can use this technique because most cameras nowadays have a built-in grid that you can pull up on your viewfinder. And it's essentially a grid like this. Now, as you can probably see on here, I tried to place my eye line on this level right here on my grid on my camera, as it's usually pretty pleasing to have the eyes on that line. Now you can also make your composition more interesting by placing your subject on either this third or this third over here, leaving two thirds of the frame kind of empty to show more of the background or scenery behind the subject and the subject to take up the first third of the frame. Now placing them on the left or the right of the image makes it a little more interesting. Now you can definitely read up a bit more on that, but essentially that's how the grid system works and how the rule of thirds works. It breaks up your frame into, you guessed it, thirds. Thirds this way and thirds this way. Say for instance a landscape, you can place your horizon on the bottom third and then have the sky and whatever else on the top two thirds. Or if the foreground's more interesting, taking up two thirds of the frame with that and then having the horizon on the top third. The rule of thirds is a guide to help you get a good eye for compositions. Number five, get a fast SD card. Now you might not have known, but there are different classes and speeds of SD cards. These correlate to how much data they can shoot at once for something like say 4K video and also the speeds at which they transfer because they they have read and write speeds. And if you're gonna be transferring a lot of photos on a regular basis, you're gonna to wanna to get a faster SD card. So my advice is to get the fastest SD card that your camera is compatible with. It'll save you both a lot of time and frustration in the future. Number six, learn how to edit. Editing is an art form and it's really where you get to be your most creative with your photography. Editing allows you to adjust the colors and tone and mood of the image to what you felt that day or what you envisioned that frame to look like and really gives you a lot of freedom to be your most creative self. But but like I said, it is an art form and there are some techniques that you can learn to help make your edits better because you can completely over edit a photo and in the beginning, you probably will, I know I have. If you want a thorough Lightroom editing guide, I actually did a video on that right here as well or here, wherever it links, I forget, but um, it's a complete beginner's guide to Lightroom so that you can watch and have it walk you through how to edit a photo from start to finish. But it's also important to watch other editing videos and other photographers to see different styles and how to edit in those styles. And eventually through doing that, you'll also end up developing a style of your own. So practice, practice, practice. It's the only way to get good at anything. Number seven, use flash on backlit subjects. So flash can seem very scary in the beginning. I mean, I'm still intimidated by it sometimes. I definitely need to brush up on my flash skills and learn more about flash photography. But popping a little flash on a backlit subject will just help expose them properly so that they're not completely silhouetted, if that's what you're going for. If you're going for a silhouette photo, that's great. Never mind this tip. But if you're not and you wanna have that nice backlight, you're gonna to need to pop a little flash on your subject. Shooting in RAW is amazing and Lightroom is amazing, but if you try and mask out your subject afterwards in post and bring up the exposure of them, you're gonna introduce a lot of noise. And what I mean by noise is that grain in the image. And it's gonna look weird because your subject's gonna be grainy, but the rest of the image won't be. So popping a little flash on your subject will just help brighten them up so that you can still get that nice, beautiful background while having them be properly exposed. Number eight, and this is a very important one for beginners. Invest in quality glass over camera bodies. So buying a quality professional lens will actually make your photography better than the latest and greatest camera body. Not only that, but lenses hold their value more than camera bodies do in the long term. So if you ever need to sell your lenses in the future, you're gonna be able to get more money from them than you will be your camera body that's now six years old. Professional lenses will also give you more shooting flexibility as well. Because most, if not all, consumer zoom lenses are variable aperture, meaning your maximum aperture gets smaller the more you zoom in. And if you need to use a zoom lens in low light situations, you wanna make sure you can have your widest aperture even at your furthest zoom point. I recently upgraded 
for my Sony kit lens, the 28 to 70. I think it's an f3.5 to f5.1 to a Sigma 24 to 70 f2.8 art series lens. And the difference is night and day. Not only in sharpness and optical quality, but also build quality. And that constant f2.8 aperture is mint. I love it so much. So in the beginning, especially if you're on a tight budget, try and get a decent camera body that'll have the features that you need for what you want to do, but spend a majority of your money on high quality lenses. Trust me, you will thank me later. Number nine, take photos of everything. Here's what I mean. Don't niche down too soon because then you might be eliminating an area of photography that you might have really enjoyed, but you never tried it. So by taking pictures of everything, you'll be able to find what you truly enjoy shooting and you'll have a bit of experience in everything else, which is key because you might need to be versatile in your career. So try out wildlife, try out landscape, car photography, newborn, portrait, wedding, and then figure out what you really enjoy shooting and do that. You might think you already know what you enjoy shooting, but you might find something else that you also equally enjoy shooting. You might think you only enjoy shooting portraits, but then you might find out that you also enjoy shooting astrophotography. And having a second area of interest can be really rewarding and freeing, especially if you make this your career and niche down to a specific field of photography. Say you make your living shooting weddings, doing that all the time might kind of drain you and you might start to just get into a routine and a rut. But by having a second area of photography that you can go and shoot just for your passion, you can keep that creative balance and spark alive in yourself. So shoot everything in the beginning because you never know. Real quick, I just want to say thank you so much for watching the video this far if you have. So please take a second to like, comment, and subscribe because it really helps with my channel and helps my content reach more people. And be sure to hit that little bell so you're notified when I post new content. Now back to the video. Finally, number 10. Be patient and enjoy the process. I know, I know. Easier said than done. You want to be taking the pictures you want already and be like your favorite photographers, but it's not going to happen that way in the beginning, unfortunately. You're going to have to get your reps in, take those photos, practice, learn, and then implement what you learn. But if you can learn to enjoy the process, it makes it a whole lot more fun and less frustrating along the way. Because yeah, you're going to take some crappy photos. They're going to be overexposed, underexposed. They're going to be blurry. You're not going to know what the heck happened in some of them but it's all part of the process. You gotta take the crappy photos to get the good ones, but it's important just to be patient with yourself and enjoy what you're doing along the way. Because photography can be very rewarding, especially when you snap that banger of a photo that you really like, and it just motivates you to get out and take even more. So I hope you guys enjoyed the video, and if you enjoyed the audio in this video, it was all recorded on this mic right here, which I have a full review on on my channel, and I'll link it right here. Now have a good one, go snap some bangers.